The author had a good track record for books, but not as much for film adaptations of his own books. The cast here was attractive, talented and fun to watch, so it should have helped sell a lot more tickets. And if we do that, we'll be killing them. Unless there's a nucleus, a small inner core that can tear loose from the mass and survive on its own. You know, I really just wanted you to say yes. Ah, the late 1990s. A period of horror renewal, massive hits, and plenty of scares. Well, yes and no. Some films like the Scream franchise hit it big, like really big, and others, not so much. One of the failures of the late 1990s box office is Phantoms, which was considered a massive flop. How did Phantoms become considered one of the biggest flops of its era? Well, it's a mix of a lot of factors, most of them easily guessed by those who've had the pleasure or displeasure of seeing the film. The story here is that of a small town where the whole of the population has vanished. The town is Snowfield, Colorado, and a ragtag group of people have to make sense of it all. The movie's based on a book by Dean Koontz, who also wrote the script for the film. So in terms of adaptation, it could be considered the proper way of doing things, as any change done to the story was made by its creator. However, some of the changes were fairly major, and not every fan of the book was enthralled by these changes. The book had originally been published in 1983, and it found its audience after its release in paperback, where it was a huge hit. That being said, the book itself was something that Kuntz had been almost reluctant to write, being that he was not a horror writer. His publisher, however, was seeing the numbers horror books made, so they needed in on that. They advised him to write a horror book, which Kuntz did, with a lot of research put into it and some truly creepy sequences. Through the years, the book almost became a film twice before the iteration we now know. Once in the late 1980s by New World Pictures, and again in the early 1990s by Allied Vision Entertainment, with both attempts not coming to fruition. In the late 1990s, following the release of the Dean Kuntz film Hideaway, which, oddly enough, was also not exactly a hit at the box office either, but did do well on video. Phantoms was greenlit. Miramax, who'd had a little streak of success in the early and mid-90s, would produce. The script for Phantoms by Kuntz has changes from the book, of course. A few of them are minor, with some of them adjusting things to take a few of the more inappropriate things out of the story. Things like making Lisa in her mid-twenties versus her age of 14 in the book as one of the characters does speak about her inappropriately, something that changing her age and changing that male character could fix easily. Of course, other changes like removing characters to streamline the cast and changing the story here and there to also streamline the story were to be expected. Probably the most effective change was that of the ending going from a happy one to a more open one, possibly to allow for a sequel. In the book, the creature is killed off with an infection, and two of the lead characters end up getting married. In the film, as they believe they've destroyed the creature, an extra scene hints at the possibility that it may not be fully gone. One could stand with these changes, as they were made by the author himself, a bit like when Clive Barker made changes between the Hellbound Heart and Hellraiser. But here, these changes do not work as well and take a lot away from the story. Of course, subplots being removed is often a good thing, but too many changes to the characters, the open ending and a drop in the story's suspense meant that Phantoms the film was much less effective than Phantoms the book. Another aspect of the book is that it seemed to be aimed at adults, as in the older adult audience rather than teens. The film, however, seemed to go for a younger audience with a cool and hot cast. The poster itself was a giant misfire, done mostly in editing instead of getting the cast together for a photo shoot. In fact, they use images that they already had. They even use the bodies of other people with the heads of their cast added, those head photos coming from other films and photo shoots they had on file at Miramax. This screams laziness and a total lack of care about the film, and folks saw through it. For fun and potential trivia game answers, the bodies of Drew Barrymore and Neve Campbell from the screen poster and promos were used and had the heads of Rose McGowan and Joanna Going tacked onto them. Neve Schreiber's face and body are his own, but they're taken from the Scream 2 poster, modified and flipped. And Ben Affleck's photo is of himself as well, but taken from the marketing from the previous year's film, Chasing Amy. This is some special level of, but why? Of course, the film had another poster since that one, but that hodgepodge of a poster was the one used in theatres and video stores all over the country. 
The film was released in theatres on January 23rd, 1998. Not exactly a great release date, especially in the late 1990s, where the film would be considered as lesser just for its release date window. Back then, and up until a few years ago, films released in February were the films the studio had no faith in and had an obligation to release in theatres. January was a bit like that, but to a lesser extent. An end of January release was never a good sign. The film would be coming up against other titles that were in similar situations and films that were held over from the holiday season, as they were large hits or films that were extended to more theatres following award season limited releases that went well. Phantoms was released in 1,859 theatres. Not a bad release, but not the largest possible either. It did kind of decent at the box office on its release weekend, pulling in $3,065,951, but then it took a nosedive after word of mouth started. The film's total box office was $5.6 million, so it clearly didn't do so well in the following weeks. Looking at the box office for its release weekend, it came up against some major players, including films that had been out for over a month. The top 10 that weekend had Titanic in its sixth week, making $25,238,720 US dollars at number one, followed by Spice World, which was the only other new release hitting the top 10 that weekend, with $10,527,222 US dollars. The other films in the top 10 were Good Will Hunting, As Good As It Gets, Fallen, Wag the Dog, Hard Rain, Half Baked, and Tomorrow Never Dies. Phantoms came in at number 9, just ahead of 007. $3,065,951 could be considered a good amount of money if the film had been an indie with a really low budget. As it is, Phantoms didn't have a really big budget, but it was still high enough to make that money and the total of $5.6 million paled in comparison to the $18 million budget. Not even getting a third of its budget back, the film was officially a flop and it was mostly due to the film not being great at all. Per reviewers, it was a terrible film. From what can be seen on Rotten Tomatoes, the film gathered, as of today, a 13% rotten rating from the professionals and a 27% audience score. Reading comments about the film online, it seems like very few like it because it's good and those who enjoy it do because it's so bad it's good. Something here wasn't adding up. Something went wrong, and it can be hard to pinpoint the reasons for this. The film here was based on a successful book, which has some more than decent reviews, one that is still readable to this day. The author had a good track record for books, but not as much for film adaptations of his own books. The adaptations such as Hideaway and Whispers were not very well received or successful at the box office. Watchers, on the other hand, did well enough to get three sequels of varying quality. The author's film adaptations were not exactly great as of 1998, so this may also have affected the box office for Phantoms. Looking at the rest of the talent involved, director Joe Chappelle has been good recently with television series like Godfather of Harlem, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Fringe, The Wire, the various CSI series, and a lot more. His film resume is a lot less impressive unfortunately, with Thieves Quartet, Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, Take Down, Dark Prince, The True Story of Dracula, The Skulls 3, An Acceptable Loss, and of course, Phantoms. It seems the man does better with the episodic format. The cast here was one that should have put butts in the seats back in 1998. Leading the pack were Peter O'Toole, Rose McGowan, Joanna Going, Leif Schreiber, and Ben Affleck. This cast was interesting at the time, but seemed to be one pick to sell the film to younger audiences the preferred 16 to 25 year old cinema going audience that so many marketing campaigns are pushing films to. The film being rated R should not have been an issue here being aimed at this audience, but the story and the book it was adapted from seemed to aim it more at the 25 plus crowd. Still, many would have loved to see this cast. Ben Affleck was just coming off Goodwill Hunting, which was still in theaters at the time. He was being talked about for awards and his name was everywhere. It was a good gamble to have him in this. Peter O'Toole was a more than qualified actor and perfect to attract older viewers. Rose McGowan and Lee Schreiber were both fresh off the screen franchise, so they had good box office appeal. Joanna Going had a solid body of work, but one that was more television than film. The cast here was attractive, talented and fun to watch, so it should have helped sell a lot more tickets. 
The time of year the film was released, the changes to the story peeve in the die-hard fans of the book, the script and direction, as well as the competition, seemed to have held down the film some. However, what mostly hurt the film were the reviews and the word of mouth coming from early viewers. These were not good and still aren't good to this day. Watching the film, it's obvious that it was a misfire on a lot of fronts. The cast selection was interesting and has some truly appealing names, giving the film a bit more attraction. However, the acting of these folks here is uneven at best, seemingly lost in the script at times. To this day, the film is a bit puzzling as to why it misfired so badly. The decisions behind the scenes seem to indicate a lot of studio involvement and some odd choices being made to work with the budget and the limitations the filmmakers were faced with. It should have been a lot better and perhaps the story at hand should be readapted, maybe even in the longer form of a series. As it is, Phantoms is a failure, one that flopped at the box office due to many things going wrong and one that didn't have legs after its original decently attended weekend. The film could have been better made, it could have had more of a cult following, had it been better or worse even for those that enjoy a so bad it's good flick. There is something here, there are good bones, but some things are missing and some things are off, and this all led to an abysmal box office and return on investment for the studio. But Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. 